All right, so welcome to the semester exam review part one. Um, I'm actually going to have to work off this just from what I'm seeing right here, not from, say, the paper, the review itself, because, well, Mr. Patch decided to make sure, being so wise that he is, and I'm talking about myself in third person, I know, left the reviews at home or at school and is trying to do this at home to make sure y'all have it. So bear with me. I'll do my best. We will go through it more, and I'll answer questions tomorrow if you need be. Okay, and I will continue and try to do some more questions tomorrow. Okay, so here's number one. Number one says put it in the correct order. So we put it in order from highest exponent to lowest. That would be standard form. So negative 8x to the fourth plus 6x cubed plus 5. Your leading coefficient is the number that's in front. So once you put it in order, your leading coefficient is the one in front. The degree is the exponent. Terms, one, two, three. Okay, so this is a quartic trinomial. I also gave it the name because, well, just in case, you never know. Next question, number two. This is it in correct order. Highest exponent to, to lowest, so x cubed, x squared, x, no x, or number. And then again, the first term, no matter what, is the leading coefficient. The degree is the highest exponent. One, two, three, four terms. This would be called a cubic polynomial. And this, both these questions are found in 6-1. So you should be able to find those in 6-1. Okay, so continuing on. <clears throat> here are your answers for 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, three, number 3, all you got to do is add. You're combining your like terms. So, you know, there I was saying um, 12 plus 3 was 15. 4 minus 8 was negative 4, and negative 9 plus 18 was 9. Uh, number 21, subtract, but when you subtract, you basically are changing the sign. So kind of keep in mind, you can go plus, and then change the sign of everything in the second column, or in the second parentheses, and then just combine your like terms. And that's the answer that you should end up with. Number 5, you're just doing distributive property. And then number 6, uh, you're just, again, I would do distributive property, torpedoes and missiles, whatever helps you, foil, vertical multiplication, however you want to do it. Uh, just, you know, whatever it would be best. And if, again, if you have questions on those, you know, let me know. Okay, number seven. Actually, I'm going to walk you through this one, so let me back that up a little bit. Doop. There's the problem. Okay, so we got 4x plus 7 divided, or 8x cubed plus 2x squared minus 25x minus 9 divided by 4x plus 7. The way I look at it is this. Take the lead term, the 4. What's 8 divided by 4? 2. So that's where I write that. Okay, and then you've got x cubed divided by x. Just subtract. x cubed minus 1x, 3 minus 1 is 2. So this would be x squared. Then take that number and multiply it. 2x squared times 4x would give me 8x cubed. That sh those two should always match, okay? Because they're going to cancel out. 2 times 7 is 14. x squared. Then in division, you always subtract. So the next step would be change your signs and subtract. 2 minus 14 is negative 12. x squared. Now, negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. I'm going to bring down the 25x. Sorry, I forgot about that. Okay, so negative 3, x. Again, if it was x squared, the next one should be x. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12x squared. Negative 3 times 7 is negative 21x. Change your sign. Combine the terms or subtract. Well, by changing sign, that puts us into subtraction. Okay, so negative 25 plus 21 would be negative 4. x minus 9. Negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. Then multiply, change your signs, and that final number ends up being your remainder. And the way you could write your remainder is like this, minus 2, uh, negative, plus negative 2 over 4x plus 7, or minus 2 over 4x plus 7, however you want to. But that's basically about it. Um, not too hard. Okay, synthetic division, the x minus 2, you're going to change to a positive 2 and then have 3 for 3, 4, 
0 because there is no x, and then negative 8. Then you just go through. Bring down the first number. 2 times 3 is 6. 4 plus 6 is 10. 2 times 10 is 20. 0 plus 20 is 20. 2 times 20 is 40. Combine. 32. You're good. There you go. 3x squared plus 10x plus 20 plus the 32 over x minus 2. Okay, and that's all you got to do. Number 9 goes the same way. The only difference there on number 9 is that you've got to make sure that um, you don't change the sign because it's not in parentheses. So it's going to be negative 2. Then you write the numbers. Then you go through the same thing. But this is synthetic substitution. So all you care about is the number at the end, the remainder. That's your final answer. So this one is 41. The answer is 41. Now again, all I did was bring down the negative 2, multiplied, combined, multiply, combine, multiply, and combine. Okay, so again, it's multiply, bring it up here, combine, okay, multiply, combine, multiply, and then combine. Uh, so let's move on to the next one, factor by grouping. With factor by grouping, we want to make sure we put them in parentheses. <clears throat> And again, if this is going too fast, folks, just rewind, pause it, do whatever you need to to make sure you got time to understand. Okay, so we put the first two in parentheses, and we put the last two in parentheses. Then you look, okay, what, the, what is the biggest number that can divide into 2 and 12, which is 2. So then I write a 2. Then whatever is the lowest number, let's say the lowest x in the parentheses, that's what you're taking out. So I see an x squared, I'm taking out an x squared. So, 2 divided by 2 is 1. x cubed divided by an x squared leaves me just an x. Take out 2x's from 3, you're left with 1. 12 divided by 2 is 6. Take out 2x's, you're left with no x's. Whatever's in that parentheses, you're going to write again. So, x plus 6 again. Okay, then from there, you're going to say, okay, what is negative 24 divided by 6? That would give you a negative 4. And there you go, you've got that now set up. Write your repeater parentheses, x plus 6. The numbers that were outside, put them together in one parentheses, 2x squared minus 4. Then you see if you can factor it further. In this case, I can take out both of the, take out a 2 out of that second parentheses. So I will take out a 2. I'll put it at the very front. 2 divided by 2 leaves me just x squared. Two divided, 4 divided by 2 leaves me a negative 2. Okay? And that's my final answer right there. Any questions? Again, feel free to ask. Let me know. So on and so forth. You know, this is here for your, your benefit. Okay, so let's make sure we got that. Okay, the next problem. Same idea, same thing. You're going to put the first two in parentheses. And then you're going to put the last two in parentheses. And then you're going to try to take out what you can. The first one, I see a 4x squared. So I take that out. That leaves me x plus 3. Write x plus 3 again. 36 divided by 3 is 12. So I divided there, combine, write my repeater, x plus 3. Combine the other two, 4x squared plus 12. And I should be able to tell there that the second one, I can take out a 4, because both 12 and 4 are divisible by 4. So I take out the 4, and I'm left with x plus 3, and then x squared plus 3 because all it took out was the 4. So there's that problem. That's your final answer. Um, those are some of those you could practice with a little bit. You know, it shouldn't be hopefully that bad. Number 12. Okay, number 12, here's what I would recommend. Go ahead and graph it. First things first, graph it. Then you can see here, this was raised to the fourth power. X to the fourth power. I don't remember the full point of it, but it's raised to the fourth power. That means I should see four answers. One, two, three, four. So you got four answers right there. I would use that to my advantage. So based on what it looks like, it looks like you can see a three, one half, negative one, and negative two. If you're not sure, remember, 
graph and then choose graph trace or actually is it trace and then graph trace okay so you're looking for that on your menu if you can do that you should be okay it should help you find the answers using the multiple choice that should be more than enough um, I really wouldn't worry about the synthetic division I think that's your best bet so you might want to make sure you remember that that is about the trace and the graph trace and we can double check that on the calculator later so you know make sure to ask questions about that the next one number 13 okay here I have it written you can see where they're crossing here it's really hard to see but you can kind of tell 2 and negative 2 then again like I said use your answer choices to your benefit um, the other ones look like they're pretty close so maybe like if you look it up like you see the answer choices and they say square root of 11 okay well you try square root of 11 you get 3 point something well that doesn't look like it's 3 point something okay then you see an other answer choice that says square root of 2 which is like 1.5 not even yeah like maybe 1.4 or 1.3 which is still doesn't look that close because it would be closer to the 1 then you see maybe square root of 5 which would say um, plus 2.2 okay and that would fit so you could have the square root of 5 now you could do it the long way through synthetic division find it like this you keep working you do not start anew you try your answers keep working down okay and so that's what I'm doing here I'm keep working down so that this final line will be an x squared and I can set that equal to that and say x squared minus 5 is equal to 0 move the 5 over I have x squared equals 5 take the square root plus and minus square root of 5 which is about 2.2 .2, like I said but again this is going to hopefully this will be multiple choice all of it and y'all can look for those type of answers okay um, so kind of keep that in mind uh, number 14 again let's graph it so we're going to do this 3x squared plus x cubed plus 3x squared plus 9x plus 27 equals 0 okay here's the key look at the graph you only see one number it's crossing that means there's only one real answer but I need three answers so I'm going to have to find that one and I think even with the answer choices that would be a little bit hard so let's try this we do the x the negative 3 1 3 9 27 1 0 9 negative 27 0 okay realize that that was x cubed this is x squared so we have x squared plus 9 equals 0 now we have x squared equals negative 9 then you take the square root now keep in mind the square root of 9 is 3 but because of that negative we will put plus and minus 3i okay don't forget every time you see a negative square root it's an i okay then we're at number 15 same thing let's fast forward that a little bit you can see it crosses two places so that means I have two answers real I'm gonna have to find two imaginary answers and it looks like it's at 3 negative 3 and 5 and again go through the synthetic division so I'm writing this all out for synthetic division I'm going to do the negative 3 and again I should have answer of 0 if I do all that right which it looks like that's what I'm going to get okay so here we go that's a 0 then from there do the 5 and y'all can see there that leaves me x squared plus 1 equals 0 subtract 1 I get x squared equals negative 1 take the square root square root of negative 1 is just plus and minus i so there you go or one eye so there are my four answers one two three four and again if you have any questions on that feel, feel free to ask alright so then we're at number 16 now number 16 gives you three possibility or three roots okay that means they're all real roots there's no i there's no square roots so go ahead and use those x x x three x's three roots but remember, opposite. So if I see negative 3, positive 3. Positive 6, negative 6. Minus 1, positive 1. Okay, then multiply. However you want to multiply, um, here we'll have x squared minus 6x plus 3x minus 18 
combine your like terms, <clears throat> and then multiply that times the x plus 1, and that would give us, uh, we'll end up at our final answer. So we'll have this x times x squared is x cubed, negative 3x times x is negative 3x squared, negative 18 times x is negative 18x, 1 times all those gives us the same things, combine your like terms, and that's where you should end up at. Okay, and again, if there are any questions on that, feel free to ask and let me know. Okay, this next one, you have negative 5i and 2. Okay, now remember, i's always occur in pairs. If there's a negative, there's a positive. If there's a positive, there's a negative. So if I have negative 5i, I also have a positive 5i, which means then I have actually three sets of parentheses. Because, again, there should be a positive and a negative 5i. So x plus 5i, x minus 5i, x minus 2. Now, here's a shortcut. When you multiply the two i's, just put x squared. It's always going to be x squared. So that's a formula you might want to make sure you make note of. If you have this where you have x plus some number i, x minus some number i, I don't care what, it's always going to be x squared plus that number squared. So let's say that's an a, or that's an a, then make that a squared. Okay, there's your shortcut. I would make sure I write that somewhere onto a formula sheet. So here I have x squared plus 25, because 5 squared is 25. Then I multiply that by x minus 2, that x times x squared is x cubed. Then I have negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared, 25 times x, and then 25 times 2. And that's your final answer. There will probably be no like terms combined. Okay, so that's those problems right there, and that should get us fairly well. Let me see what the next problems are. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to do <clears throat> number 18, and hopefully I've got this right because I'm looking at an old, I found an old volume or an old review from on, on my hard drive, so I'm hoping that this is it, uh, and maybe it's a little bit different, but we're looking at negative 6x, I don't care about the rx or ffx, whatever, 6x to the 4th plus 4x cubed plus minus x squared plus 1. Okay, the question is, what is the leading coefficient, the degree, and the end behavior? Okay, so the leading coefficient is negative 6. The degree is 4. Then the end behavior. Okay, again, you have to realize, and I'll, I'll give you a little thing on this in a second, but we're going to say your end behavior will be something like this. As x approaches negative infinity and positive infinity, in this case I think it says r of x, so we're going to say r of x okay what is it approach? Well keep in mind this is an even degree and it's negative Okay, that means that if you saw a graph of this, you'd probably see something that looks like this, where it's going down. Okay, what does it mean when it goes down? That it's going to negative infinity. Okay, so remember, what this means is, on the left, which way is it going? On the left, it's going down. On the right, which way is it going? It's also going down. So this part remains the same. Keep that in mind. So you might want to make sure you could write that in. That's your end behavior. And then you're telling me which way is it going. That's end behavior. Which way is it going, up or down? Negative infinity or to positive infinity? Number 19, same thing. Uh, it should hopefully be in order, negative 16x cubed. If it's not in order, you put it in order. Negative x squared plus 8x plus 12. Okay, so your leading coefficient is negative 16, your degree is 3, so your end behavior is as x approaches, okay, this part doesn't change, this actually usually is already written for y'all.
Okay, and then this is Q of X according to what I'm looking at here. Maybe it's different. I don't know. Okay, and again, if you needed to, you look at the graph. Now, if you looked at this one, you would see a graph, I would think, that might look something like this. Okay, well, as I'm on the left side, which way is this going? It's going up. That means it's going to positive infinity. On the right side, I'm going down to negative infinity. And there you go. That's all that means. That, that's how easy that question is. Okay, I think that's a good place. We finished up chapter 6 right there. That's a good place to stop. I will make that part one, and then we'll see about doing part two, where I hope to get through chapter seven and maybe even parts of eight. Okay, uh, that's that for that. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you so much.